Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're gonna talk about how universal gravitation relates to potential energy and is ultimately gonna tie in with conservation of energy. So first, let me show you the formula. This is the formula for universal gravitational potential energy, U sub big G, and that's gonna be equal to negative G times mass one times mass two divided by some distance or some radius that's separating them. You'll notice this looks very similar to the force equation. There's two big differences. Number one, this is negative. I didn't know energy could be negative. Yes, it can. And really, I'm not gonna make sense of it for you because I don't think I can make sense of it for you. But just think of it like this. You need that negative sign to make the math work out. And then the second difference is that this distance is squared for the force equation, but it's not squared for the energy equation. And just to remind you, this ties in with gravitational potential energy we had before, because that gravity was just equal to mgh. But now we're gonna be using this equation, number one, when the problem tells us to, but also when we have objects that are really big, like two planets or two asteroids or whatever, or if we're talking about an object going really far away from Earth's surface, like a rocket ship. So now let's look at some example problems. So let's say we're going to launch a rocket from the surface of the Earth. So something like this. And here's the Earth, which I'm gonna give the variable m sub e. Here is the rocket, I'm gonna give the variable m sub r. I'll tell you the radius of the Earth is equal to, we'll call it r sub e. This rocket is launched with some initial velocity, I'll call v naught. And this rocket's gonna go up, 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 up. And that's gonna make it to here. And then let's say it falls back down to Earth like this. But it's making it significantly far enough out where we have to use the universal gravitation equation. And let's say it travels a distance of lowercase d. And your job is to solve for that distance in terms of variables m sub e, m sub r, radius sub e, radius of the Earth, and V naught and capital G. So how would I solve this? Well, first of all, I'm hoping you're realizing this is not forces, this is energy, conservation of energy, which means I'm gonna pick two points, point one, the surface of the earth, and point two, when it makes it to its peak height, right before it turns around and heads back to the planet and crashes. So at point one, what kind of energy do I have? If you say kinetic energy, you are correct because we have velocity. But we also have gravitational energy as well, and this is less obvious, but the reason why is because you always measure the distance from the center of the object, in this case, the center of the Earth. So what I'm gonna write is at point one, E total at point one is equal to the universal gravitation, UG, plus kinetic energy, K. And we know UG is negative G, mass one is the Earth, mass two, is the rocket divided by the radius of Earth, and that is not squared, plus kinetic energy, which is one half mv squared. But be careful because that mass is not the mass of the Earth, it is the mass of the rocket, so mr, times the velocity, which we said was v naught squared. And that's it for e total one. Now for e total two, looking at the energy at that point, what kind of energy do we have there? Definitely potential, because we're a distance away from the Earth, but do we have kinetic? And the answer is no, the velocity is zero at peak height, as it always has been. And so because of that fact, it means at E total two, it's only going to be universal gravitational potential energy, which is now negative G times, again, mass Earth times mass rocket. But this time the distance, look at that distance. What do you think the distance is? If you say D, you are incorrect. The correct answer is d plus radius of the Earth, re. d plus re, like that. And that's it for my equations. And remember, if with conservation of energy, I just gotta set these two things equal to each other. So e total one equals e total two, which means negative g mass Earth, mass rocket, divided by radius of Earth, plus one half mass rocket, v naught squared is equal to negative g mass earth mass rocket over d plus radius of earth. 
Here's the hard part. Since we're solving for D, this is not going to be easy. So if you even just get here, I'm happy. Good job. But here's the difficult algebra that we're going to have to do now. First, I need to get this D out of the denominator. So I'm going to multiply by D plus RE to both sides like this, just like that. So that cancels on the right side. And now for the left side, if I want to solve for D, then I got to divide this whole thing over. Yeah, terrible, I know. So if I do that, that leaves me with just D plus RE on the left. On the right in my numerator is negative G mass earth mass rocket. Denominator is massive. It's negative G mass earth mass rocket over radius of the earth plus one half mass rocket V naught squared. And in terms of simplifying and canceling out, technically MR is gonna cancel because it shows up in every term. G does not cancel because it doesn't show up in this term. And the only way I can make this look nicer is if I get a common denominator of 2RE. And if I do that correctly, and I'm not really going to explain this because again, I don't really care about this part of the problem. It's the algebra part. But it's going to be negative 2G mass Earth over 2RE plus RE V naught squared over 2RE. This can combine to make negative G mass Earth over negative 2G mass Earth plus radius Earth V naught squared over 2RE. And since this is a complex fraction, I can take the reciprocal of the denominator and multiply, giving me negative G mass Earth times 2RE over negative 2G ME plus RE V naught squared. I feel like I'm just saying letters at this point. But finally I get, as a final simplification of the right side, negative G mass Earth 2RE divided by negative 2G mass Earth plus radius Earth V naught squared. Okay, so that actually looks decent. Don't forget the left side is still D plus RE. So then my final answer, I just have to subtract RE from both sides and just really stick it at the end there. So final answer, the distance I get is negative G, which we know that constant, mass of the Earth, which we kind of know that constant, you could look it up, times two times radius of the Earth, divided by negative two G mass Earth, plus radius of the Earth, V initial for the rocket squared, minus the radius of the Earth. And that was a very fun problem, wasn't it? So again, if you don't care about the math simplifying part, that's fine. As long as you got to this step right here, which was the conservation of energy part, if you got this part correct, then I really don't care, because I don't think you're gonna see anything harder than this on the test. And so that's it for the first problem. And now there's one more problem I wanna look at, and this one, believe it or not, is gonna be harder. Well, the math is gonna be way easier, but the concept is harder. So let's say, here's the Earth, once again. And this time I have a satellite, it looks something like this, that is in orbit around the Earth. And what we're gonna say is this satellite is moving with some speed, I'll just call it V1. But then the satellite is basically going to move farther back in its orbit so that it's now the red orbit. And so now the satellite's somewhere over here, traveling with some velocity V2. And my question to you is, if energy is conserved, which I'm telling you it is, which velocity is bigger, V1, V2, or are they equal? So you can pause the video and try this yourself if you want. It will use conservation of energy, just like the last one. And I'm not looking for a number, I just wanna know which one's bigger. And maybe you just want to guess because you have no idea. So you can guess V1, V2, and I'll shake my head because if you're guessing on this, then secretly I hope you fail. But go ahead, pause the video, try and figure it out, and unpause it when you're ready to see the solution. Okay, and here's the solution. So first, I need to pick two points. I'll call this point point one and this point point two. At both of these points, I have gravitational potential energy 
and kinetic energy. So for E total at point one, that's gonna be negative G times mass of the Earth times mass of the satellite, which I'll call MS, divided by the distance. This is the distance from the satellite to the center of the Earth, which I will call D1. So D1. Plus the kinetic energy of that satellite, which is one half mass satellite times V1 squared. And then I gotta set that equal to E total two, which is negative G mass earth mass satellite divided by distance two, which we're saying is the distance from point two to the center of the earth, that's D2. And then plus one half mass of the satellite V2 squared. And now it's tough to say what we're solving for here exactly, but I do know I'm gonna be setting these equal to each other. So let me at least start out by saying that. So negative G mass earth mass satellite divided by D1 plus one half mass satellite V1 squared equals negative G mass earth mass satellite over D2 plus one half mass satellite V2 squared. And now we gotta figure out which one's bigger, V1 or V2. So here's what I would do if I were you. I would move the gravities over to the same side and then move the kinetic energies to the same side. So in other words, I'm saying add this quantity to both sides so you get negative G mass earth mass satellite over D1 plus G mass earth mass satellite over D2. And that's equal to subtract this quantity to both sides. So it'd be one half mass satellite velocity two squared minus one half mass satellite velocity one squared. And so you can say the mass of the satellite cancels out because it shows up four times, shows up in every term. And you can even say multiply both sides by two to get rid of the one half. So in other words, left side is now two times negative G mass earth over D1 plus G mass earth over D2. On the right side, all you have is V2 squared minus V1 squared. And again, we're not gonna be solving for V2 or V1, but what I want you to realize here is that if this answer is positive, and you can plug in numbers to prove this, but if this answer is positive, that means V2 must have been bigger than V1. And if you get a negative answer, that means V1 must have been bigger than V2, because minus V1 squared. And if you get zero for your answer, that means that V1 is equal to V2. To determine if this side is positive or negative, I need to figure out if this side is positive or negative. And to do that, the two doesn't matter. All that matters is the part in the parentheses. Specifically, if this quantity is bigger, that means it's a positive number and the answer will be positive, V2 greater. And if this quantity is greater, that means you'll get a negative answer and V1 is greater. So how do I know which is bigger, the blue or the red? Well, we know one thing for sure. The only different thing between them is the denominators. D1 is smaller than D2. And we know that because just look at the picture again. D1 is definitely smaller than distance two. It's closer to the earth. And so because this denominator is smaller, remember a smaller denominator is going to make a bigger number. So in other words, what I'm saying is the smaller denominator, D1 is gonna be the bigger number. And because that's bigger and it's negative, that makes the left side negative, which therefore makes the right side negative and V1 must be greater than V2. And that's the answer. And the good news is that once you know this fact, you can basically memorize this from here on out. If you ever see a question like this, just know the closer you are to the center of the earth, the faster that satellite is going to be moving. And so that's all the questions I wanted to look at today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.